Well guys, we are starting off the 16th day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge on my way to my good friend Angie's house. We always have amazing canning days. We don't have a whole lot on the agenda, but I'm going to try and share what I can with you. So, off on the road I go. I do have to admit, I am very excited for an air-conditioned ride before I get there. It is already stinking hot and it's only 9 o'clock this morning, so I think it's going to be a hot one. Well guys, we are already hard at work as we always are when I get together with Ange. I'm gonna blame her for being the instigator as to why I've become an obsessive canner because I really didn't can before I met her, to be honest. So, what are we making today? We're doing some garlic pasta sauce and some lamb chili. So let's take a look. Look at these gorgeous peppers. We're making some roasted garlic pasta sauce today. So all of this needs to go into the oven along with our garlic. And there's that homegrown garlic from this year. We've got some olive oil drizzled on top of that. And we're gonna cover this with tin foil and we're gonna roast both in the oven for, is it 40 minutes, 45 minutes? Yeah, so once it's out, it'll smell amazing in here and we'll get busy. And we got tomatoes everywhere. Ah uh, yes, tomatoes, tomatoes, more tomatoes. Angie's tomatoes are always ready before mine, so it makes for a real long tomato season. So as you can see, we're using Angie's juicer this time. I have the same one, and as I've said in numerous videos, this is something that every canner should have, really. If I could figure out how to be a salesperson for Victorio, I would do it. <laughs> so while putting tomatoes through the juicer for our garlic pasta sauce, we are also browning off our lamb for our chili. Busy, busy around here. And somebody wants to be the star of the show. Oh, yes. Hi. Who are you? I don't know if you're Batman or Robin. So currently for this lamb chili, we have eight pounds of our ground meat and we've got five large onions and we're going to add some garlic and get this all going. It's a very, very simple recipe and I promise I will do this one as a video shortly. Well, it has been busy, busy, busy. We are almost done our chili. Just need to get it cooked off. Everything's in the pots and we're still cooking down that garlic pasta sauce. This is one of those times where I will say it pays to freeze those tomatoes first because so much of that extra moisture is gone. But we were working fresh from the garden this time. So unfortunately, even in this heat, we've got cook down time, but let's take a look. In all fairness, we have gone from two pots down to one, but as you can see, we're still not mounding on the spoon and pasta sauce really needs to mound on the spoon at least a little bit. So. We've got some more time to go. This recipe should make about 12 pints. We've doubled it for the two of us. So let's see what we get at the end. And our chili looks amazing in its pots. We just need to get that uh, pasta sauce cooked down enough to get this on the oven. It needs to get to a boil for 10 minutes and then get into the pressure canner. Here you this go. looks nice now. Look. Ooh, it looks good. really good. Oh, mounding on the spoon well. So That's we what we want to see. So we just have to add the herbs. And we're ready to jar. Two minutes. Two minutes on our cans in or jars in the oven, and we're good to go. And I have to say, it has been a hot day. It's a very hot day. <laughs> <laughs> well, switching gears completely, I just came back from our uh, silky coops, and I've got a little mini harvest of five silky eggs. I think, in the spirit of every little bit counts, emphasis on the little, it uh, certainly does count to have these little silky eggs. So because the spirit of this is basically preserving, there are ways to preserve eggs. We don't really preserve them. They have a pretty good shelf life and we just sort of bank them and uh, we keep them in the fridge and we find the silkies will keep, the eggs will keep for three or four months, maybe even more. And so what we tend to do is we get better laying in the spring and then again in the fall and we just keep adding to it, putting dates on uh, each package that's in the fridge so we know how old they are and uh, it definitely sees us through the whole year, which is uh, pretty awesome. Well guys, Chris already beat me to preserving some of the harvest today and he was really thinking outside the box with the eggs. But what I'm after today is this, my stevia. Now, I don't know if you remember, I think it was the very first day I harvested some stevia or it was right before every bit counts. I'm not sure which, but anyways, we'd harvested some stevia, cutting back those tops so that we really started to see some growth. And as you can see here, it's become a monster and really needs to be butchered back again today. So we're planning to do a huge harvest today. We're not getting any other herbs. I'm going to fill that drying rack right to the top 
with all stevia so that we can really, really put some of this away for the winter. And you probably won't recognize this patch of ground here, but this is where we pulled out the garlic in the last video. Or maybe it was two videos ago now. I don't know. It's a blur. But look at this. Our two silky hens have their little chicks out and they are working this ground, getting any bugs that might have been in there so that hopefully we can replant it with a few fall crops. Either way, silkies are just darn cute birds. And look at this after buying those peppers. Chris this is picking is only, peppers. This is only a handful of them. These early peppers that we planted in the raised beds. All these ones beside me, these are the biggest peppers we've ever grown. Well guys, look at that huge bowl and so much left. In another week, this is all gonna sprout back up again and we'll be able to do this all over. And we've got probably another month and a half before this plant uh, won't be able to handle our cold temperatures. I have a feeling we should have brought more bowls. That's a fair number of peppers. And on a total side note, Chris is uh, taking care of some previously dried catnip. And look at these cats. They are super, I'm going to say stoned. <laughs> <laughs> They've had a lot of catnip exposure. They are cat high. Cat high, exactly. Cat high. But again, it's another valuable commodity to have over the winter season. Well, guys, I have to admit, this three days is seeming a little bit less productive than it should. Don't get me wrong, today got some things canned up. James worked really, really hard on getting that stevia all ready to go into the drying rack. Now we do have to get that moved to the dehydrator today, which is the third day of this video, and we've kind of had slim results. But one thing I wanted to uh, talk about and what we're going to be working on is something to do with lemons. So like everybody else, I'm sure out there, we visited the discount rack at the uh, food store when we picked up those peppers and we found an amazing deal a bag of lemons two dollars and only one of them was spoiled on the bottom but I'm still gonna be able to use portions of this so today we're going to be taking the zest off of these and getting it into the dehydrator with that stevia in order to make some lemon pepper seasoning. Now, all these lemons probably are going to make a full jar of lemon pepper seasoning, which will do me for the rest of the year. And it's perfect thing to have on hand when you wanna do like Caesar salad with chicken on top. You just grill that chicken or rabbit meat and you put a little bit of lemon pepper. Mm, it is really, really good. So we won't be getting to the recipe in this video because of course the zest needs to dehydrate, but stay tuned in the next one when we make up our seasoning. So while we're zesting here, the one thing I would mention is when you are zesting, you don't want to go too much into the white on the lemon. You really want to stick to that stuff that is the colored. Don't get me wrong because I want to get value for my money. I push it a little bit, but that starts to get a bit more of a bitter taste to it. So you kind of want to stick to the yellowed parts. All right, so before we get that lemon zest on our dehydrator, we're going to put this uh, stevia that James wrecked up for us yesterday. Now look at that. I mean, one day in the thingy and it's already, you know, slightly dried off. So it's gonna be pretty quick in the dehydrator. So we will get that all on the dehydrator. And then we'll set that rack on top and off it'll go. All right, guys. While we're waiting for that lemon zest to dehydrate for the next video, we're gonna make something fun. Now, I finally got a break from the rain. You can see behind me as I move to the side, my Jerusalem artichokes are taking a beating. So much is taking a beating out in the garden because it has just been rain, rain, rain. But I have a window right now, so we're going to harvest some lemongrass and some green onions because we're going to make some red Thai curry paste. Now, yes, this does go into the freezer, not a can, but it is still such a wonderful thing to have. And my lemongrass looks amazing right now, as do my green onions. So let's go take a look. It's like heading into a jungle. But look, look, <gasps> doesn't it look beautiful? Look at that lemongrass. This year has been wonderful for it. 
To be honest, everything has just been growing like mad. I'm gonna put you up in the air here. I'm just gonna be quiet and I'm gonna give you a little twirl around the raised beds. I know I've promised to do a garden tour, but I'm worried I won't get to it before some of the stuff starts to die back. So I'm just gonna give you a quick little peek. All right, so let's get back to the task at hand. Look at this. Now my recipe calls for two stalks of uh, lemongrass. Well, it actually calls for one stalk, but I'm doubling as I always do. And because this is fresh lemongrass, we can use the leaves where normally if you were buying it from the store, they strip off all those outer leaves that are full of flavor and ship it just as the stalk. So I'm thinking I could probably get away with one, but I'm still gonna cut the two. Maybe I'll cut a bigger one and a littler one, and that will give us so much flavor in this Thai sauce or paste, I guess you could call it. So let's have a look, see in here what we got. Now I'm hoping this will video well. I'm going to kind of pull stuff out of here, but you can see, actually, this is a pretty big one. Maybe we will just take one. Let's see. Yeah, let's just take this one. Watch this. Hopefully my scissors will cut it. I never thought of that. So you can see, I mean, that's probably getting close to a four foot long stalk with the leaves. Now in the store, you would get that and you wouldn't get any of these leaves. But let me tell you, the leaves are full of so much flavor. Mm. Is they're gonna work? I can't talk with my mouth full. They're gonna work perfectly. So I think one of this is enough to do my double batch. Now we better go get some onions before it starts to rain again. Well guys, I am super excited to share this one with you. This is a favorite around here and it's kind of versatile and it's got a few different ways you could make it. So this is just the way I do it. You can tweak this however works for you. What we need is a blender, food processor, whatever works that you have, containers so that we can freeze this in the freezer and all of our ingredients, which I will go through as I put them into the blender. Now, the first thing I am going to say is we're gonna put everything into the blender, blend it up with a partial amount of our peppers, and then we're going to put the rest in as we need. That's something to remember. You can adjust the thickness of this paste by how many just red bell peppers you put in. Now it calls for one medium per recipe or per batch. Now I'm doing a double batch, but I do find I don't put it all in because I like it to be a little bit thicker. That does make it a little bit spicier though. So one thing we will be using is our hot Aurora peppers. Now you can use chilies. Uh, you could probably even use red jalapenos to be honest. I mean, anything, whatever works for your spice taste. These little Aurora guys are tiny, but they pack some punch and we leave the seeds in so it all just gets pureed up in here. Works amazing. On a side note, I cut up the lemongrass just so that we could see size-wise what that provided. And it was about two thirds of a cup from that whole stock. So you probably want around a half a cup per recipe or per batch maybe. Um, I don't know, I just always had one stick from the grocery store and I always just chopped it right into the thing. I never ever measured it. But I hate when people just say this and you want a number, right? So I'm telling you right now, I'm putting two thirds of a cup into my double batch and we'll see how it goes. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's dump in that lemongrass. All right, so to our lemongrass, we've added half cup of green onions. Now the recipe calls for one medium pepper, but like I said, not putting all of that in right away. Half a teaspoon of coriander, one teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of black pepper. Recipe calls for two to four chili peppers, depending on how spicy you like it. We're going to taste test and maybe add a few more. One teaspoon turmeric, half a teaspoon of salt. I always use a non-iodized salt like sea salt or pickling salt. One heaping tablespoon of ginger. So the next ingredient that we have up here on the recipe is our lemon juice. And conveniently, I had just zested all eight of those lemons. So I juiced two of them to provide the five tablespoons that I need. So the recipe as a single batch calls for two to three tablespoons of lemon juice. So I'm going with two and a half, therefore I'm going with five. So let's get our lemon juice. We've got one, two, and like I say, 
a half, two tablespoons of lime juice, two tablespoons of oil, and last but not least, a tablespoon of maple syrup. I can already tell here I'm gonna need some more peppers in there because the peppers is what's going to provide my liquid and this is looking like it's definitely going to be a paste. So I'm going to put the other half of the medium pepper that I have so far and we'll see what I need for the second batch. So I still have all of this red pepper left to add to this as we need. So let's do our first blend. We'll do a taste test to see if it's spicy enough and decide if we need to add more peppers to this. All right, so you can see in there, it's starting to get a little bit runny. I added a couple more of my uh, red peppers. I still have two pieces left, but I don't wanna add them because I don't wanna make it even runnier. So definitely I would only do one medium pepper for a double batch. But what we are going to put in here is a little bit of our homemade paprika. It would just kind of thicken it up, but not change the flavor, right? At least that's the hope, but it's not bad. It's pretty thick and I'm gonna do a taste test here. So let's see how spicy this is. I will admit I'm a little nervous because like I said, those little Aurora peppers are small, but they pack some punch and I didn't take the seeds out. Chris is smiling on the other side of the camera because he knows this is gonna be spicy. Okay, a little after kick, but you gotta remember, you're gonna mix this in with something for soup or coconut milk for a curry. Oh gosh, that is really good. I'm almost tempted not to add anything, to be honest, even more paprika. We're gonna do it anyway. I'm scraping out the lid to get as much as I can back into the container and it smells incredible. I know I do this all the time. You can't smell it, but you can imagine. And it is incredible. The things we do for television. This is so awkward trying to film, scooping it and getting me on the camera and everything, but we're gonna do it. I want to get four tablespoons in here, basically a quarter cup, because that's what most recipes call for for us when we wanna make Thai soup or a curry or something like that. So let's see how much we get. I'm pretty sure it will hold four tablespoons. Oh, it's gonna be a perfect fill. Oh, it's like it was meant to be. I couldn't remember because it's been a year since I made it. Look at that, four tablespoons, perfect fill. So we ended up getting six of these little quarter cup jars, which is wonderful. That's six meals and I think we're gonna make it again. Well guys, another three days has come and gone. I believe it's day 16 to 18. Didn't get as much canning done, but still had great progress on a few things. When I was over at my friend Angie's, we got five jars of roasted garlic pasta sauce and I brought home three canned jars of our lamb and black bean chili. I had two in the fridge that we had for dinner as well. Going to be making that in the next video so that you guys have the recipe. But the real winner, I think, actually there's two winners for this week. Real winner is this red Thai curry paste sauce for in the freezer. Love it, definitely going to be making quite a bit more. Went to the store, got myself a whole bunch of jars for the freezer, so super excited for that. And as you know, we've already started up that fourth freezer, so Looks like I've got some space to put a few things in there anyways. And the other real winner this uh, week, look at that full jar of our stevia. We still need a few more of these, but James worked hard on getting that in the dehydrator for us and it filled our first jar. So I do have to say we're already using out of this jar. So hopefully that stevia patch will really deliver for uh, this year. That's where making some of those syrups and things like that are nice. Even though they're lower sugar, they still sweeten a little bit. So. That's what we have for you for this three days. Stay tuned for the next video where we revisit that lemon pepper seasoning. And I believe we've also got some plans for some jelly and making that lamb stew. So stay tuned for that and hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to give a thumbs up on your way out and we'll catch you next time.